Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Synergy stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Synergy is the only pure play Cape size ship owner publicly traded in the United States. Synergy provides marine dry bulk transportation using 11 Cape size vessels. The average age of each vessel is 11 and a half years, and the total vessels can carry 1.9 million tons. The Cape Size is the largest dry cargo ship that can carry any type of cargo, such as iron ore, grain, and coal. Let's get started with the model. This is a micro cap company, market cap 42 million. They're trading at 62 cents a share, and they have 68 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you forecast a future free cash flows and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. And the company has negative free cash flow in three of the four years. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses and they have negative net income every year. Their revenue looks okay. It more than doubles from 2016 to 2018, but then drops a little in 2019. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. That was 86 million in 2019. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses that are directly tied to generating the revenue. That was 66 million. They had gross profit of 20 million, the same as the last two years. Although in 2016, they had negative gross profit, which is not good. Below that is the operating expenses. These are the expenses that are not directly tied to generating the revenue. And that was $7 million in 2019. So they did have positive operating income in three of the four years, which is great. They have quite a bit of debt, so their debt payments were higher than their operating income. So that's why they had negative net income every year. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much money the company generates through its operational business. So they did have positive operating cash flow in three of the four years. In 2016, it was negative. And the way you calculate free cash flow, it's operating cash flow minus CapEx. And you can see they have a lot of CapEx each year because those ships are expensive. 10 to $20 million just to buy a used ship, let alone a new ship. They do fund a lot of their business on debt and equity. They issued 22 million of stock in 2016, then 2.6 million the following year, then 13 million in 2019. And they issue even more debt, 41 million, 43 million, 69 million, and 11 million. They did pay back their debt in some of the years, but overall they're issuing more debt than they're paying back. That's a big reason the stock price keeps going down because they're so indebted. Let's look at a capital structure, $198 million of debt, 184 million of net debt. Net debt is debt minus cash and they have $30 million of equity. They pay a pretty high interest rate in their debt, 7.5%, and they have 87% debt in their capital structure, which means they have 13% equity. And the cost of equity is 8.6% because they have a pretty low beta, 0.82, so the stock is less volatile than the market. And their WAC is 7.6%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's the discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 79 million. We discounted those numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $71 million. We divide that by 68 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $1.04. They're trading at 62 cents, so they're trading at a 40% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street's at 85 cents, so they're also saying the stock is undervalued, just not as much as me. If you look at the stock price the last five years, it appeared the stock price was trading over $1,000 at one point, but that never happened. The reason it looks that way is because they did a lot of reverse stock splits. They did a one for 16 in 2020, a one for 15 in 2019, and a one for five in 2016. So they were trading below $1, which is why they did the reverse stock split to bring them over a dollar so they wouldn't get delisted. The only way to try to figure out how much they were trading at back here is you would have to multiply these numbers, 16 times 15 times 5, and then that number you would divide by this stock price. It's a little confusing. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you would have $5 today. That's a pretty bad return on investment. This is a list of all their 10 ships in their 10K. They did buy another ship after they reported the 10K, but they only have 10 listed. The average age of a ship is 11 and a half years. 
The value of the ships are $253 million combined. The least expensive ship is $12.5 million, and the most expensive is almost $40 million. One of its ships was built in 2001, so it's almost 20 years old. The average age of a ship before it gets scrapped is 21 years. So this ship is getting pretty close to that time, and the one in 2004 only has a few years left if it does hit the 21 years. And this article mentions the youngest Cape size that was scrapped were 15 years old, and those were Japanese vessels. I believe these are all Japanese vessels. So when the company does need to buy ships, it needs to go into debt. It doesn't have any extra cash flow to buy ships. It needs all the money to run its business. The company's customer base is pretty concentrated. Three of its customers make up 52% of its revenue. That could be a little concerning because if one of those customers goes bankrupt or stops doing business with this company, it could really affect this company's bottom line. So there is a decent chance this company goes bankrupt, but I'm assuming they're not gonna go bankrupt and these are the possible free cash flow expectations. But of course, anything can happen. It's really hard to value companies with such poor numbers. Let's look at the financial ratios. Average P.E. in the market is 12.5, the median is 14.3. P.E. is stock price over earnings per share. The company has negative net income, so they have negative P.E. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 0.5, so they're doing a lot better than the median and average. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 1.4, so they're also doing better than the median and average. And the way you calculate book value per share is equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet. Their tangible book value is also $30 million. So all their assets are tangible assets, which is good. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. So they cannot cover their interest payments with their EBIT. EBIT is earnings before interest and taxes. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income, so they have negative ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They can only cover 10% of their current liabilities with their current assets. That's not a good sign. Their current assets are 13.5 million of cash, 1.8 million of receivables, and 3.9 million of inventory. So they are struggling with cash flow because in the trailing 12 months, they did have positive 1 million of free cash flow, but they have negative 215 million of working capital. Working capital's current assets minus current liabilities. They need to renegotiate their debt terms and possibly get more debt to run its business. This is the only company I did in the industry marine shipping, so I can't compare them to anyone. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.